Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can leap tall buildings at a single bound, race a speeding bullet to its target, bend steel in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. But before we join Superman, listen. And now to our story. When Tumbleweed Jones returned to the ranch with his tank trucks after successfully delivering 6,000 gallons of oil to the Bear River refinery, thanks to Superman, he was amazed to learn that Chuck Connors, his oil field foreman, was in reality a member of the forces that had twice attempted to wreck the truck. As if that were not enough, Abner Cheney, the unscrupulous local banker who owns the only pipeline to the refinery, suddenly paid a visit to the ranch. In an effort to force Tumbleweed to use his pipeline at exorbitant rates, Cheney played his ace card. He accused Tumbleweed of fraud and possibly murder. As we join them now, the suave banker explains the situation to Tumbleweed and Clark Kent while young Jimmy Olsen stands by frowning angrily. Listen. I'm just stating facts, Tumbleweed. You borrowed a large sum of money from my bank for this ranch is collateral for the loan. Now, I discover you don't own the ranch. That ain't true. Comanche Joe, give it to me. Lock, stock, and borrow. Have you got a deed to the property? Button tarnation to deed. A bill of sale, Tumbleweed. Nobody sold, nobody nothing. Comanche, give me the ranch. Mm, that's your story. Now, look here, Mr. Cheney. I'm just an old cowhand trying to get along. I ain't got no book learning to speak of, but no hombre living can stand up and say Tumbleweed Jones ain't shooting straight. The facts speak for themselves. This ranch is still owned by Comanche Joe. Why argue about it, Tumbleweed? Comanche can set this matter straight, can't he? Well, reckon he can. We'll ride over and get one of them deeds from him pronto. I'm afraid you won't, Tumbleweed. Comanche has disappeared. What are you talking about? That's right. He's vanished into thin air. As a matter of fact, there's been a little talk that maybe someone got rid of Comanche Joe. I think you're going a little too far, Mr. Cheney. If you're trying to accuse Tumbleweed... I'm not having... accusing anyone, Mr. Kent. I just said there's been a little talk. What kind of talk? Well, some folks have the opinion that Comanche Joe never gave you this ranch. That you just up and took it. That might account for him being missing. Why, you dirty low-down coyote. Take it easy, Tumbleweed. Get off this ranch, Cheney. Make tracks up. No cause to lose your temper, Tumbleweed. We can settle this between us. All I'm really interested is in is getting your oil business. I can close my eyes to the rest. You let go of me, Mr. Kent. I'll put an arrow clean through his crawling gizzard. Easy, gizzards. Tumbleweed. I'll give you 24 hours to make up your mind. And I'll give you 10 seconds to make tracks, you sneaking, crawling rattler. Let me at him, Mr. Kent. Go ahead, Tumbleweed. Knock his block Keep off. quiet, Jimmy. You heard what I said. 24 hours before I call in the state's attorney and prefer charges of fraud. And possibly murder. Why, you... you... better get into your car and leave, Cheney. I can't hold Tumbleweed much longer, and I won't be responsible for what happened. I'm going. And don't you never set foot on this ranch again, you black-hearted polecat, or I'll... I'll run you so full of arrows, you'll look like a porcupine. Remember, only 24 hours. Well, I'll get you yet, you crooked, no good reason. Yeah, you big fat baboon. Jimmy, stop that. Oh, you should have let Tumbleweed pile into him, the punk. Well, how come you protected that snake, Mr. Kent? I was protecting you against yourself, Tumbleweed. You can't settle things like this by fighting. I guess you calm down and we'll talk it over. Well, that's easy enough to say, Mr. Kent. But things are simple to set still when a man shoves a branding iron on your hide and... Marks you a crook and a murderer. I know, I know it isn't, Tumbleweed. It's the only sensible thing to do. You can't think straight when you're hot under the collar. Well, let's figure this thing out logically. Sit down here on the running board of this truck. Okay. But I ain't much good at figuring things out, Mr. Kent. I ain't used to responsibilities like running a ranch and an oil field, and maybe I make lots of mistakes, but one thing certain is that I ain't never done nothing wrong in my life. That is like breaking laws and set. Gosh, you don't have to tell us that, Tumbleweed. Of course, that's taken for granted. Well, that's how come I get so tarnation hot when anybody says I broke the law. Maybe I ain't got one of them there deeds, but I know Comanche give me this here ranch with no strings attached. Now, look, Tumbleweed, you don't have to protest your innocence to me or Jimmy. What you've got to do is 
prove to Cheney that he's wrong. Sure, that's all. But how am I going to do that? I still think you should have let Tumbleweed well the daylights out of that fat fellow. Quiet, moon. Jimmy. That wouldn't have got us anywhere. Cheney would have just added a charge of assault to his veiled accusations of fraud and murder. That's what gets me more than anything else. Imagine me harming a hair of Comanche Joe's head. Why, well, he's my best friend. I'd, I'd cut off my bow arm for that ombre. Of course, it's ridiculous. But the circumstantial evidence built up by Cheney makes it look pretty bad. Well, I'll bet Comanche turns up just as suddenly as he disappeared. I'm not so sure of that. Tumbleweed, has Comanche Joe ever just suddenly disappeared like that? No. Nope. He never goes no place without he lets somebody know where to locate him. Well, then why don't we call up his ranch and find out if they know where he went? That's not a bad idea, Jimmy. We can't lose anything by trying it. He's got a phone, hasn't he? Yep. Well, come on up to the cookhouse. We'll call him from there. I'd give anything to find that Cheney was lying, that Comanche's at his ranch. No, Jimmy, if I sized Cheney up right, he knew definitely that Comanche Joe wasn't there, or he wouldn't have played his hand as surely as he did. Here we are. I'll open the door. Okay. You'd better call, Mr. Kent. I'm I'm still so mad, my nerves is jumping like a bucking bronc. All right, Tumbleweed. Uh, what's his ring? One long and short and long. One long, short and long. No one seems to answer. I'll try it again. Oh, here's somebody. Hello. Uh, hello. Is Comanche Joe there? Yes. This is Clark Kent. I'm calling for Tumbleweed Jones. Oh, I see. Well, can you tell me when he left? Yesterday? I see. Yeah. He, he went to see whom? Oh, I see. And you haven't any idea when he'll be back. All right. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Who was that, Mr. Kent? That was Comanche's housekeeper. What's she say? Does she know where he is? She's rather puzzling. She said that Comanche got a phone call last night to meet Larson at some spot near Lost Valley to discuss a business deal. Well, that sounds funny. Yeah. Why would Dan Larson want to make palaver over business at night? Did she say when she expected him back? No. Golly. Maybe Larson is working in cahoots with Cheney. Now, Jimmy, don't you go getting no fool notions like that buzzing around your head. Nobody ain't got no right to say nothing like that about a man. Bless me, sure. Well, that's quite right, Tumbleweed, but what exactly do you know about this man, Larson? Well, Dan Larson is my oil broker. Has been ever since I struck oil on this here ranch. I see. Does he have any other accounts in this region? Oh, he sure does. He's the only broker in these parts. Has a ex Exclusive license for to sell oil to the Bear River Refinery. And Cheney's pipeline leads to the same refinery, doesn't it? No, well, Mr. Kent, just what are you aiming to prove? Well, nothing especially. Uh, tell me, hasn't Larson been doing everything he can to sell you on the idea of signing a contract to use Cheney's pipeline? Why, sure he has. That weren't nothing but an act of friendliness. Uh-huh. And wasn't he the only one you told about the trucks being ready to make delivery just half an hour before we arrived here to find them shot full of holes? Jeepers. Do you think maybe Larson tipped off those men to do that? Well, I don't know anything, Jimmy. I'm just thinking out loud trying to fit these pieces together. Mr. Kent, all I can say is that you're lassoing the wrong cayuse. Why, it's plumb ridiculous to think of Dan Larson as having anything to do with letting daylight through them tank trucks. Why is it so ridiculous? Because Larson was the hombre who fixed it with Cheney for me to borrow the money on this here ranch. Oh, he was, eh? Oh, Tumbleweed, can't you see how all these things tie in together? Can't you see how they all fit into the puzzle too well to be simple coincidence? Gosh, I can see it. No, I can't. I think you're doing wrong, by Larson. Well, maybe, Tumbleweed, but arguing about it isn't straightening out your troubles with Cheney. No, nor is it helping us to find Comanche Joe. Well, what have we got to lose by riding into town and having a talk with Larson about that mysterious call to Comanche? Like as not, we'll learn that he don't know nothing about it. Maybe we will. Then again, maybe we'll be able to pick up a clue about Comanche and Lost Valley. It's worth a try. Sure it is, Tumbleweed. Let's go. I'll get one of the boys to saddle my pony. Your pony's all saddled and waiting for you, Jimmy. So's a pair of horses for Mr. Kent and me. I told Clem we might be wanting to ride out so as I could show you where Balance and Rock used to be. Uh, you take the bay, Mr. Kent. She's smooth riding. Okay, thanks. Need any help, Jimmy? I should say not. All right. There we are. Yeah. All set? Yep. Let's go. Yep. Yeah. Come on. Gosh, 
gosh, isn't this a beautiful day for a ride? Smell that air. Sure is. I'd enjoy it much better, but for my worry. Now, ah, don't you worry, Tumbleweed. We ought to be in town soon, and I've got a feeling we're going to find out something there. What? Rifle shots. Off to the right. Who could be shooting out here, I wonder? Don't know. Let's have a look. Yeah. Mr. Kent, over there. Two men on horses. They're riding away. Well, let's follow them. No, wait. Look over there on the ground. Is that a man? Sure is. Well, he's either dead or badly wounded. Maybe we can help him. <clears throat> Somehow that big body looks familiar. Jimmy, open your first aid kit while I turn him over. Okay, Mr. Kent. Great Scott, Tumbleweed. It's Comanche Joe. Comanche Joe. Dead. Shocked into speechlessness, Kent, Tumbleweed, and Jimmy stare in horror at the lifeless body of Comanche Joe. And coupled with deep sorrow over the untimely death of their Indian friend is the growing realization that now it will be impossible to establish Tumbleweed's legal right to the ranch. It looks like Cheney has won hands down. What can Kent, even as Superman, do now to help Tumbleweed? Will they ever learn the identity of Comanche Joe's murderer? What will happen? Tune in next time for another episode in this exciting adventure in the West with Superman. Don't forget, tune in again for the next thrilling episode with Superman. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Welcome back. You know, I, I have to say that this is quite an unceremonial way to uh, kill off what was a pretty good character in Comanche Joe. We don't even get to hear him this serial. Uh, we just know that he existed and he's just... Uh, summarily shows up as a dead body, which is kind of sad for such a notable character. But we still have Tumbleweed Jones. Uh, I, you have to feel so, uh, sorry somewhat for folks who lived in the country, because I can't imagine that they were that this gullible as, uh, as uh, Tumbleweed Jones is portrayed. Well, I don't believe in none of that there city logic. Well, we'll see how Clark Kent and Superman wraps this up, uh, wrap this up in our next uh, five parts. This leaves them quite a challenge. And hopefully, Comanche Joe uh, left some type of proof behind, a clue that they could find. But uh, I don't know. We'll find out next week. Got any comments? Email me, adam at adamsweb.us. Remember to cast your vote for the show on Podcast Alley. And please remember to check out Laser and Sword magazine, laserandsword.com. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.